Hello everyone. Quite an exciting one today. The power station lives. Yeah, a lot led up to this stage. I don't even know how many hours of research. Probably up to a hundred. It took so much to figure out what needed to be done to get the level of power that I wanted, the level of electrical setup. It was a mammoth task trying to wrap my head around all this stuff because it's not just all the components, it's figuring out all the sizing of the cables and figuring out all the various connectors. Like there is no way around this really other than to draw a map of the entire thing that you want to build with every cable size, every connector size, because there's such a mishmash of different ones, you're just never going to be able to buy the right things. So I actually drew the diagrams, I figured out the circuits, I did multiple different pictures which I can probably throw in here to figure out how to build this massive 200 amp system. In a moment of dazzling foresight, I actually decided to build the ground connection for the whole system before I started anything else, which was great. Uh, so the basic principle is drilling a hole into the van, sanding it down so you've got access directly to the metal work and then sticking a conductive rod into it that you can attach everything else to. So I started with a four mil bit and then moved up to an eight, just like I did with the rest of the times when I was drilling holes into the van really. Sanded it down, fixed it in place, used my multimeter on the 200 ohm setting to test the connection. My understanding is a value close to zero indicates you've got a reasonably good connection. Um, and yeah, everything looked good. I probably made the steel rod a little bit too long, but it does sort of have the added benefit that it kind of makes that whole corner of the van basically off limits. Uh, I'm not gonna like try and put any stuff there, which is probably for the best. And it is now kind of blocked off by my extension lead, my 15 meter extension. Um, so that just kind of dedicates it to, to the power, the raw power. So I then was trying to fit the wheel arch box, which I've already built in the previous video and get it in place because it's what's going to house the bulk of the electrical setup. So with the battery in place to kind of use as a weight, I could figure out how to fit the various baton around it and figure out the length of baton required to run along the front, which is what's then going to support uh, the sort of front of the bed that is the divider between the main living area and the back, the garage, shed, hub of all things electrical. I really should clear my glasses before I start because I always realise that anything's doing. Maybe I'm just being a fidgety, fidgety fidget. A fidgety, 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 fidgety. And so yeah, I cut down the baton, got that right first time, that was great. Uh, cut down bits of baton to go around the battery box and the sort of support that's going to run along the bottom of the wheel arch box to kind of form the baton that it's going to fix to, but also the baton that holds the batteries in place on either side. Then I was basically just trying to figure out what arrangement I was going to have. Like, I had an idea in my head. Uh, but once I started laying it out, it was just clear from how difficult it is to bend the cables that that arrangement really wasn't going to work. I, all cables don't really want to be bent, but the bigger they get, the more and more they don't want to be bent. And because I had such a highly rated system, I wanted to be able to draw quite a lot of current because I had a 2000 watt inverter. Uh, these cables need to be pretty big. Uh, I went with 35 millimeter cables for all of the the main cabling between the batteries and to the, the main power sources, the main positive bus bar and the inverter. So I kind of had to go through a few different versions of just placing it down and trying to see where I could actually get the cables to bend to, what was realistic, what wasn't, because you need quite a lot of space around the components for the cable to sit. So I ended up eventually settling on putting mostly just the fuses, the positive bus bar, the negative bus bar, the shunt and the charger and the inverter actually on top of the battery box and then other things I mounted to the side of it so like the the sort of individual negative terminals for all of my uh, electrical components, the two fuse boxes I've got, yeah two, 
uh, a 10 oh a 10 one and a 6 one uh, and I maybe should have gotten more for a bit more expansion but it's not that big of a deal and also at the front I put a big battery isolation switch which enables me to turn off all of the drawers although not and not the charging um, I don't have a switch for that uh, the idea was to cut a hole in the the bed front piece as I call it as a reference to Arrested Development if you know you know yeah that works quite well uh, I like being able to turn it off at night, it prevents my ghost drawers and it turns off all of the like blue LED sockets that I've got everywhere and the heater screen which is really bright and actually draws quite a lot of power so it, it's good to be able to turn it off at night. I essentially put that switch as close to the positive terminal as possible so as to minimise that cable. I mean you generally want to minimise the length of any and all cables wherever possible because the longer the cable is the greater resistance in a circuit and that means a greater voltage drop. Um, and sometimes that means you need to use bigger cables to reduce the voltage drop. So like after a while of kind of dry fitting and moving around and experimenting, I sort of realized that there wasn't much I could do except just bite the bullet and start cutting and start fixing and just doing it because there's only so far you can get with, you know, lengths of cable and trying to wrestle them into place. Like eventually you just have to go, I think this is going to work, I'm just going to have to try it and if it goes wrong then I just have to deal with it and maybe buy some more cable and more connectors. So I just started assembling it, started cutting lengths of cable, they're quite difficult to measure how long they need to be, there's a certain amount of guesswork involved, but actually it was all fine, I don't think I made any mistakes in terms of cable length. I mean the 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 inter-battery cables, like the cables connecting all the batteries to one another, were a little bit longer than they needed to be because I was kind of paranoid about making those too short and then wasting a whole bunch of cable and having to buy more. I really didn't want to do that. So they are a little bit longer than they needed to be, um, which is maybe something that I would change in future if I redo it, which I might do because the crimps were very, very difficult to, to do. Um, I bought, I bought like a set of tools, like initially when I'd miss-sized the cables, not having really thought about how big the interbattery cables really needed to be because of how much current I was drawing. So I'd bought a non-insulated crimping tool, just like a really cheap one, all of this from 12 Volt Planet basically, who are great and I thoroughly recommend. But I'd gotten their cheapest non-insulated crimping tool that could handle cable sizes up to somewhere in the 20, 20 millimeter range. Um, but that turned out to not be good enough because I had 35 millimeter cable for the biggest size. And so I found a tool on eBay that had like interchangeable dies and did go up to 35 millimeter. So I, I bought that, but as it happens, it really wasn't very good. Even with my entire body weight resting on the handle of this tool, it still just would not crimp certain things. So I had to kind of use a mishmash of the tools that I had available to kind of get it a little bit in so that it would then fit and could be crimped a bit more. And it was just, it was a nightmare. Like my hands were sore for days after this. It was so physically difficult. I should have just bitten the bullet and bought a better tool, but it was like another 50, 60 quid. And I'd already spent about that much on crimping tools. I couldn't face doing that. That is sort of something that I regret. And as it happens, I actually have ended up buying that tool now because some of my cables have actually ended up coming loose. Like some of the, the crimps have come off. So I've just decided like, I'm just gonna do it properly. So I may end up redoing the cabling for this at some point, um, shortening the inter-battery cables and getting a much nicer crimp which with a bigger, more heavy duty tool. I would say if you're making a big electrical setup like I am, it's definitely worth getting the right tools, getting the good tools and I'm kind of happy to have it because I think I'm going to end up doing more electrical stuff later. And one of the other things about this is you can't really test anything properly until you've got everything wired up. So I just had to go through and, and wire up the whole the whole shebang, the whole setup, all of the inter-battery connectors, the connection to the isolation switch, to the positive bus bar, on the negative end to the shunt and then to the negative bus bar, wired up the extra kind of like voltage checking probe 
probe? I don't think it's a probe. Well, there's extra cables that you need to run from the charger, which I assume is there to allow it to check the voltage separately from the cable that's supplying current. But it all actually turned out really well. I Once I got to the point of attaching the final cables and plugging in the battery monitor, it just sprung to life. It just worked immediately. I couldn't really believe it, to be honest after how hard so much for this build has been to get this working basically first try was amazing because i kind of really enjoyed the electrical aspect of building the van i knew that it was going to be a really big thing for me because i'm trying to build a nerdy office space and so it was going to be electrics heavy right from the beginning it took so much work to figure out how to do it but actually the work paid off and it sprung to life right on cue. Now, I, what I hadn't done with all of this was kind of like finish everything off. Everything still needed to be fixed down more securely with glue. All of the cable connections needed heat shrink to protect them. Uh, you know, everything was kind of done in a sort of temporary fashion just because I really wanted to test whether it was gonna work before putting in all that extra effort. You know, maybe that was unnecessary. Certainly if I was to do this again, I probably wouldn't bother because I kind of have faith in, in what I'm doing now. Uh, but, you know, it wasn't too bad of a move. So at this point, I basically dismantled everything again to do all of that, gluing everything down permanently to fix like all the battery supports in place and all that kind of fun stuff. I also needed to insulate inside the wheel arch box. Well, you know, I could have not done it, but I figured I might as well. I think for both of them, I covered the wheel arch itself in bubble foil and then also put some Kingspan and spray foam around the edges. So it's pretty well insulated. Uh, I don't know how big of a difference that makes, but you know, hey, I did it. Now, when it came to securing the batteries in place, I did something that I've not seen anyone else do, but I think it's perfectly acceptable and it seems to work quite well for like the specific constraints of how I've done it. I decided to get some ratchet straps like you would use for securing loads on cars or trucks or vans or whatever and I got some pretty heavy duty little metal eyelets to hook them into. I got four of those and they were rated to 0.1 tonne which I assume is a metric ton, so 100 kilos. So that should be enough for my 130 kilo battery bank. Yes, 130 kilos of battery. They're crazy heavy. I'm so glad I got four rather than like two or three bigger ones because even these were hard enough to deal with in terms of moving them around. The ratchet straps were rated to a few hundred kilos. I can't remember exactly how much, but definitely plenty. So everything worked on paper. Um, again, I like glued and screwed the eyelets into place. And then I fixed the ratchet straps, but I didn't tighten them too much at this point because I needed to wait for the glue to set. I think it's like 24 hours is how long you're meant to keep it under pressure and presumably not try and ratchet it off the ground. And the positioning of these, there was wood batten under the floor for both those to screw into so I could use really long screws. So I think it's pretty secure. I don't think the batteries are going anywhere, which is good because they would destroy everything if they were to go somewhere. <laughs> so it was then a case of heat shrinking everything and wiring it all back up again. And I haven't managed to get that much footage of this stage of the build because the light and weather was crap. And I was just getting stuck into doing it like, it would have just been very, very long time lapses of me doing what looked like very, very little. But I do have a time lapse of me heat shrinking and putting everything back together, which is lucky because so many of the time lapses failed, but this one didn't, which is very polite of it. I was able to do some of the heat shrinking just sat inside as well, a chair, which was quite nice because almost all of this was on my knees on a wooden floor. Uh, so sitting in a chair to do some van work, luxurious. After I got everything wired back up again, I proceeded to secure it all in place. I bought these little 3M cable tie attaching things. Well, I don't know if they're 3M, but they've got 3M adhesive stuck on the base and a screw hole. So, you know, where the adhesive is good enough, like on metal, you can just stick them, and where you're sticking to wood, where the adhesive basically doesn't do anything, uh, you can screw it into place. So they were great and I bought a bunch of cable ties and I actually went and secured everything down and neatened it all up and 
yeah i'm actually quite proud of how it all came out like i really don't think it looks like an unprofessional mess at all it almost looks like it was done by someone who knows what they're doing which is shocking because i don't know what i'm doing but you guys know that already and yeah largely that sticking everything in place has stayed exactly where it is so far i had to move some of the cables around the ground because they were in the way of the bed post uh, but otherwise everything has basically stayed exactly where it is uh, so I'm, I'm quite pleased with all of that and that basically concludes getting the power station online it's not the the full extent of the electricals being finished by any means not even not even close <laughs> No, nah, it is actually quite close. It, relatively speaking, if we count all of the research that had to lead up to it. I still needed to figure out how I was going to do the battery to battery charging because there was this problem of my van not having a D plus connection for me to use because modern engines, modern alternators don't run all the time. So you can't use traditional methods of, of split charging by basically saying if the voltage at the battery is over a certain voltage, charge, otherwise don't because the voltage is constantly changing even when the engine's running. So you need a signal from the vehicle that says the engine is running and then the battery to battery charging will kick in. I hadn't figured that out at this point. That's gonna come in a later video, but I was quite proud of managing to figure that one out because the internet did not tell me what to do. I also hadn't wired the solar in at this point, uh, despite it being mounted. That comes a little bit later as well. But at this point I had power that worked. I had like an inverter that would that would run and I was able to charge the batteries from regular household mains AC from the triple charger so yeah it was definitely something yeah it was it was fun it was it was very long it took a long time to get all these cables sorted and there was still a lot more sorting cables required but I really enjoyed the electrics I'd happily do another electrical setup in another van at some point I, I think it was the most fun I had uh, somehow it tapped into my computer science-y nerdy brain and yeah it was really enjoyable like it's kind of simple once you get the basic concepts and wrap your head around the connectors but I guess a lot of things are quite simple once you've figured them out um, and there's still loads of stuff that is beyond me but I'm looking forward to dabbling in it in future I want to expand the electrics I want to do more electrical stuff it's fun you should do it too build a van it's great yeah if you have enjoyed this video or found it helpful a like and a subscribe or a comment would be super lovely uh, it always makes my day and yeah i'll catch you in the next one see you later taters <laughs>